In this video, I'll be covering uh, an interesting example corresponding to simplex method. In my earlier videos, I have explained what is simplex method and which sort of linear programming problem uh, we can solve using the simplex method and also because of its variants such as big M and two phase method. Now I'm adding uh, certain examples which look like very tricky and where we need to apply simplex method to find the result. So here in this particular video, I want to solve the system of simultaneous linear equations by simplex method. So here in this problem, I'm interested in solving the system of simultaneous linear equation using simplex method. So all the previous video you can check in the description box related to simplex method and its variant. And for the simplicity purpose only I've considered two decision variable in my problem. But of course, we can extend this for three variable or four variable. And we can consider even a larger system. Now suppose if I want to this problem using the simplex method, but you must have observed that there is no objective function. So whenever we apply some simplex method, we always look for this sort of format where we have maximization or minimization problem. And then we have something in the objective uh, function subject to certain constraint. They may be greater than, uh, less than or equal to right hand side. And then we have some condition on the decision variables. So now, as you can see that we don't have any format, there is no condition on the decision variables. And also there is no associated objective function, but still we can apply simplex method because simplex method is mostly based on the row operation. So now as x1, x2 is not given as the non-negative decision variable because we require them to be non-negative while applying the simplex method. And so we need to convert these unrestricted decision variable into restricted decision variable. And we notice that if x1 is unrestricted, then we can write correspondingly to new decision variables. So any unrestricted variable can be written as a subtraction of two uh, new uh, decision variable where both of them are non-negative. So this point also I've explained in my initial videos when I've discussed simplex method and the standard form. You can check the videos link in the description box. So now and similarly writing x2 as x2 dash minus x2 double dash. So here I write x2 dash is also non-negative and x2 double dash is also non-negative. So now rewriting these equation which is given this will become instead of this particular x1 which is in my first equation I can write this as x1 dash minus x1 double dash and then write the x2 dash minus x2 double dash equal to 1 and similarly we do the conversion for the second constraint this becomes 2x1 dash minus 2 times x1 double dash plus x2 dash so this will become x2 dash minus x2 double dash equal to 3. Now we look at this as a coefficient matrix so you can see that none of the coefficient uh, will give me a ready identity column because that's the one uh, initial basic variables for which I construct the simplex table. So here, since the coefficient matrix which is associated with this particular matrix, you can look at here. What are the coefficient of x1 dash, x1 double dash, x2 dash and x2 double dash. Let me to write down the coefficients. This is 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, then 1, 1 and minus 1, minus 1. So since the ready identity is missing, so I need to add an artificial variable. So introduce artificial variables, A1 non-negative and A2 non-negative. And we can either apply the big M method or we can apply the two phase method. So suppose we apply two phase method. So we can say each having the cost minus one, each having cost minus one. And I'm just considering the auxiliary LPP with the objective function as maximization. And so applying two phase method, we write maximization of Z equal to other decision variable have objective function as zero because it was not given. But for the artificial variable, I'm attaching this cost minus A1 minus A2. Had somebody would have written minimization, then in that case, you could have also written minimization of Z equal to zero into X1 plus zero into X2 plus a1 plus a2 so if we have considered this as the objective function then apply the minimization criteria enter the most positive if somebody would have considered uh, objective function as maximization then consider the entering criteria enter the most negative or we could have also considered the uh, big m uh, method so if somebody would have considered big m in that case we can say that the objective function is if we want to consider maximization, so we can consider this as minus m times a1 minus m times a2 
or we could have considered minimization of z equal to plus m times a1 plus m times a2. So we notice that even though the objective function was not given, we can actually associate an objective function depending upon what sort of variables are appearing in the problem. If the original coefficient matrix does contain an identity column, we even don't need to add artificial variable and just take the objective function as 0 into x size and 0 into x to the original decision variable. And maybe the z row in that case remains 0 or whatever be the calculation comes during uh, in that simplex citation. Now, since we are applying, uh, we need to solve this system and we have associated this maximization objective function and I am applying two phase method. So let's construct the first phase with this as the auxiliary LPP. Auxiliary LPP means where this is the objective function in the auxiliary LPP. So now in the phase one and noticing that we have already added artificial variable in the first and the second constraint that we have introduced in the previous step. The first table look like basic variables a1, a2 because these are the choices for the basic variable and then of course writing x1 dash x2 double dash and the all other. So now just by looking the coefficient matrix we can fill out this table. This is 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1 and then the 1, 0, 0, 1. This will bring the right hand side and we know that artificial cost we have considered as minus 1, minus 1. So just calculating this in the usual manner we got this value as minus 3. This value is 3 minus 2, 2, 0, 0 and then multiplying xb with this cb vector we got z value is minus 4 and let me just write z here. Now we can see that this is a maximization problem so enter most negative so here x1 is carrying the zj minus cj which is minus 3 and so it is most negative and then by checking the minimum ratio rule so we take 1 upon 1 and 3 upon 2 so 3 by 2 is 1.5 and 1 upon 1 is 1. So the first artificial variable leave the basis. So this 1 becomes a pivot element. And hence in the next table, we write instead of a1, we write x1. And then a2 will come here. And then we require 1, 0 and the zj minus cj is also 0. Keeping this in mind, we set up the, set up the row operation. So r1 goes to r1 plus 3 times r2. As you can see that you have a minus 3 here and we got a 1 here. So this would be the row operation. At place of r2, we require r1 uh, only which is already given 1. So this will be same. r3 goes to r3. Because here it is minus 2 and we desire it to be 0. So R3 minus 2 times R2. So now as R2 is going to same as R2. So let's just keep the second row as it is. And then you can see that R1 is R1 plus 3 times R2. So this is your R1 and you add 3 times R2 to get the next row. So this will give me 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 3, 0. And the last entry is minus 4 plus 3. So this value will come minus 1 and now similarly I'll calculate R3 and now we again look at uh, the ZJ minus CJ row and here we see that this is still negative. So we still have an entering variable minus 1 and because this is minus 1 so we cannot remove this one or we cannot consider this particular scalar in the minimum ratio. So the only choice is that this particular element will become the pivot element and a2 leaves the basis. So now x2 dash is entering the uh, basis and a2 leaves the basis. So for the next table I can again have the row operation and here you can see that r3 is the pivot row. So there we require 1 and for all other places we require a 0. So this is already 1 so let's keep these other entries as it is. So that's as it is r3 goes to r3. And for the other position here this is minus 1 and here it is minus 1. So we require simply R1 plus R3 and uh, then R2 plus R3. So we can simply add uh, these rows 0 plus 0 because I need to add with this one. And then similarly keep on progressing for the next case also. So this is 1 minus 1 that is 0. And so 3 minus 2 which is 1 and 0 plus 1 this is 1 minus 1 plus 1 this is 0. And then for R2 plus R3 again I need to add uh, R2 and R3. So this is 1 minus 1 and I get a 0. This will be minus 1, 1 and here we got 2. And now look at Zj minus Cj. This is all Zj minus Cj which is greater than or equal to 0. And our uh, objective function was maximization at the current simplex table. 
and we can also see that z this is for the auxiliary lpp which is a phase one this is equal to zero so as per the two phase method we should move to phase two so because in the two phase method we uh, start solving the phase one and in the phase one if the associated uh, objective function value comes out to be zero we move to phase two where we consider the original lpp objective function lpp uh, original objective function but now you notice that we didn't had any original objective function we were only supposed to solve the system of linear equations so now only from the phase one we can guess it no, you can see that this is the solution that we are getting. These are the basic variables and they got the solution 2 and 1. So from here we can see that x1 is 2 and x2 double dash is equal to 1. And please correct that this was x1 dash actually. We have entered x1 dash. So I just skipped this putting dash over here because this was dash. So these are two basic variables so once we know that these are basic variable the remaining variable in the problem are obviously non-basic so that means x1 double dash is zero and x2 dash is a zero so now getting back to our system x1 was x1 dash minus x2 double uh, x1 double dash and x2 was x2 dash minus x2 double dash this was the initial assumption we have taken so this means here x1 dash value is 2 and x1 double dash value is 0. So the value for x1 is 2 and the value for x2 is this is 0 minus 1. So this value is minus of 1. So this means x1 is equal to 2 and x2 is equal to minus 1. This is the value for x1, x2 which satisfy our given system of equation. So now you have an idea in case you have system of simultaneous equations. You can solve them with a uh, simplex method where we either you can apply two-phase BGM or even if you are not involving the artificial variables and the coefficient matrix itself is giving a ready. So that means we are simply applying the basic simplex method. So that's another interesting application of the simplex method that we can solve the system of linear equations.